everyone. Welcome back to another uh, product demonstration, this time from Kibula. Back again this year with <laughs> something really exciting, I take it. Yes, I mean, this year we thought instead of doing some slides, we'll actually do a demo just to show you the power of the platform itself. I love that. You're the first person that will only show a demo. And, I have one uh, slide. Uh, one slide? One slide, yes. You're forgiven. <laughs> so introduce yourself. Yeah, so my name's Tim. I'm one of the solution architects here at Kibula, so I'm helping companies who are new to Kabula to get the most out of it, essentially. So doing everything from demos to POCs and everything in between, essentially. Okay, awesome. So hopefully showing something that can maybe give some inspiration to some people out there. Okay. Uh, before we do the actual demo, I thought it would be somewhat useful just to give a reminder of the high-level architecture of the platform itself. Uh, so Kabula is this API layer that's sitting on top of storage. And this would be a cloud data warehouse like Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift, Synapse, one of these things. And it provides these isolated dockerized components for you to work with data. Now, these components could be extractors to pull in data from your data sources, such as CRMs, ERPs, databases, marketing sources. Whatever you need to connect to, you can use one of these components to bring them in. You can then work with our different transformation backends. It could be SQL, Python, R, DBT, no code for the more business users. You can have interactive workspaces to essentially do some code development, data exploration. It's a sandbox for you to really innovate on your data, essentially. You can have other box applications to enrich the data sets, which we'll look at a little bit later. We can build data applications with Streamlit that we're hosting and managing for you. MLflow, MLflow server underneath, so you can actually train ML models within the platform. And, last, we, and lastly, we can use writer components to take the data from the warehouse itself and push it to some sort of destinations. This could be process automation in the source system itself, or it could just be feeding other sort of business systems. And the demo that we wanted to show today would be using a lot of these components uh, which uh, we'll see in the platform just now. I already know this is a good platform because you included <laughs> the Julia language. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see uh, it. And in terms of the actual use case we wanted to run, so this is the exhibition center we're in. It's Chistamassen, yeah. I think, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yeah. And we saw there was quite a lot of reviews. There was around 3,000 reviews on the uh, about the exhibition center. So we thought it would be kind of an interesting idea to scrape those reviews and do some sentiments analysis and keyword extraction and just kind of explore them to see what it's all about, you know? Are okay. people happy or sad okay. <laughs> with the exhibition okay. center yeah. or not? That makes sense. Uh, so this is what the UI of Kubula looks like. This is what the platform is. As I mentioned, it's API first, so the UI is just an abstraction of working with those APIs. You can also work on the CLI if you want to work completely head headlessly. So we do accommodate business technologists or business users as well as the more technical users. We don't want to limit them at all so they can work programmatically. Um, as we mentioned, we're running you know, various, I say, Docker components, and this is something called a flow, where we're taking all of those different building blocks, all those different components, and building some sort of pipeline in a very user-friendly way. So the first thing that we need to do and for Let me ask one thing before you oh. even keep going. I saw a version control mm -hmm. thing at the top. Is this a... Uh, uh, what is this? Is this a, not a UML diagram, but like a, what would we call this? Is it a flow, you said? Yeah, we, we call them flows. It's essentially data pipelines. Underneath it, you're just making some sort of JSON configuration that we're going to be version controlling for you. Okay, uh, okay, and cool. We will be also looking at the version controls as well, just to show you all the different optionalities that we give our uh, customers. Mm. So in terms of the actual use case, the first thing we needed to do was actually pull in the raw data. So the first thing we did was run an extractor. We use one of our technology partners called Appify, which is a web scraping company. Um, but when we roll back the version, we'll see all the different other options you have available to you to do the just ingestion of the raw reviews. Once those reviews have landed in the underlying storage layer, which in this case, it's Snowflake, and we're deployed in GCP, we could also be deployed in AWS or in Azure itself. And this could be BigQuery SQL instead, but I use Snowflake. I ran a SQL transformation just to clean the data up initially. I only wanted reviews that had some text because that would make sense <laughs> when we're doing sentiment analysis. Yeah. And I just I want to get rid of all the null values. Uh, once the SQL script finished, I took the clean table, ran it through our Gen AI components, which uh, I used OpenAI for it, to do the actual keyword extraction for me, to do the actual sentiment analysis for me. I took the responses from the Gen AI components itself. I consolidated them all into a single table. And then I grouped the keywords by the different sentiments. And the last thing that I did was populate some sort of schema to connect to my BI tool. But I also built a data application, which is a Streamlit app that we're hosting and managing. Uh, so we can actually interact with the data a little bit more. Cool. And if we scroll up a bit, just to see the different optionalities are available, as you pointed out, version control exists in the platform. So this is whatever you're doing will be version controlled. If you're building a pipeline, if you're configuring one of those components, at all times, you can always compare with previous versions. You can always roll back to previous versions and just see the raw JSON config yeah. that's underneath the UI itself. 
So I'm just going to roll back to the previous version, just because I already prepared this to show all the different optionalities that are available to you. So I went this approach. You could go, instead of using Appify, you could use the generic extractor to connect to REST APIs. You could use our own Google Places Reviewers extractor. You could even run a Python script if you wanted to, to pull the data into the warehouse. Instead of using SQL, we could have used no code, Python, DBT, R, or any other language that we would want to have uh, used. Instead of generative AI, we could have used Google and NLP. We could have trained our own model to do the analysis for us. Uh, or we could just use you know, Gemini or Llama or uh, a different model completely. Right. And lastly, but not least, we could have used any other visualization there. We're completely agnostic. So I use Whaley as one of our other partners. It could have been ThoughtSpot. It could have been Good Data, Looker, Power BI, or whatever it may be. Now, if we quickly click through, let me just quickly revert back so we have a very nice pipeline <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> instead of all the little mess I made. So if we look into how can we work with AI in our pipelines. So I've already prepared a nice data set in this generative AI, compo AI component. All we're essentially doing is, firstly, we're authenticating. We're using our AP, uh, open API uh, key. We could choose a completely different service provider. Maybe OpenAI is the best now, but in who knows two months' time, it could be a different one. So we want to have the optionality and not just be locked into one of them. Uh, we're doing the keyword extraction and sentiment analysis. And this is actually incredibly easy to do. And before I click into it, we can see it's also version controlled here as wow. well. Yeah. If we click into the keyword extraction, all that is required is essentially providing the table that you created from the SQL. I took the top 500 reviews with the most text because I found that that actually had enough text to do all the sentiment analysis for me. Uh -huh. I selected the GPT-4 model. We can do some different configurations with the model options themselves. And most importantly is you're providing your prompt there. Uh, so we will be sending API calls with all the different uh, data in the different rows of your table itself. And we'll, uh, the components will be spinning back a table into Snowflake for us that we'll use for the subsequent data processing. Return them as JSON. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Um, so this is how easy it is to actually start working with AI in your pipelines themselves in Kabula. We try to make it as user-friendly as possible so that the advanced people can do like maybe cooler things, <laughs> but the business users can also interact with it, right? And if we look at the end results um, of this uh, pipeline itself, so I'm just going to scroll all the way back to the top, uh, this pipeline, I decided to automate as well. So at the top here, I said, I want this to run every day at 5 a.m. Uh, maybe it would make sense to run it you know, on a weekly basis or hourly basis, whatever it is. You can choose the frequency. And the platform will execute it in that exact order. And the first thing we're going to look at is the end result. So what did we actually find out from the review? So if I go to the dashboard itself, this is kind of what we looked at. Lots of numbers. I'm maybe not a BI developer. <laughs> but out of the 2,918 reviews, uh, only around 1,000 actually had text in them. Um, the average rating was like 4.18. The average reviews that a reviewer actually left was around 80 or 76.8. So it's not like spam accounts leaving reviews. Right. Uh, no one ever received a response, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, we took the top 500 reviews to actually analyze themselves because they actually had text that was sufficient. This was the overall sentiment score. So like one being, I love it. Negative one being, I completely hate it. So pretty positive. Yeah. We found around 11 anomalies where these people left either a really high score or a very low score, but the sentiment score that was associated to it was pretty negative. So all these people left five-star reviews, but they either had neutral sentiment or negative sentiment. Oh. So if we actually click into one of these, for example, this one, to see what their actual review was. I don't know if it's showing on the screen. It's a bit cut off. It was a surreal feeling to be vaccinated in a giant hall as if I was a lab mouse. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> which is an interesting, uh, which is an interesting five-star review, right? Yep. Uh, so those were what we would call anomalies in the data set themselves. We can also see the top five keywords that came up, vaccination, because I believe it was a vaccination center. Yep. Uh, the average sentiment score, how many times it came up in the reviews. And then I just thought it would be interesting to see who yeah. were kind of like the review influences. Yeah. Uh, they what is it, what does this mean, that these people uh, do a lot of reviews? Yeah. yeah. Okay. These people do a lot of reviews. Maybe they have you know, a lot of followers on Google Maps. And, and they're all, this guy's always angry when he makes his reviews. So this was the, the sentiment score of the review he left oh, oh, okay. for, for, for this uh, exhibition center. Yeah. But this is just how many reviews he's actually written. Right. So maybe you want to pay special attention to these people to respond in a... You know, well, okay, so the cool way. thing to do, this is for your next <laughs> yeah, version yeah, for here, next demo. <laughs> is to figure out what the average review of these people is in general, yeah, and sure. then sort of normalize for that to see if they were mm -hmm. extra angry when mm -hmm. they were here, extra happy. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, 
mean, if the exhibition center wants to reach out to us, we can definitely build that. I think so. You heard it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and this was in terms of if you wanted to automate a dashboard, right, which you can do within the platform, as we can see. But all we're doing is just consuming the data. We're not really working with it too much. Right. And this is where Streamlit comes in. So if we go back to our actual pipeline, we saw that there's two outcomes to the actual data preparation or the data pipeline that we built. Right. One is... Wait, what were you just showing it in now? What I was in a tool called Whaley. It's a BI tool. Okay, Whaley. Yeah, it's BI. one of our partners. Okay, okay. Um, it, it could be the Power BI or right. look at like and one And where is the data hosted? These results are, are they hosted in Whaley or? It's in Snowflake, so it's just creating the It's in the Snowflake database. and Whaley's yeah. pointing at it. Uh, so okay. it's in Snowflake that's sitting underneath Kubula essentially. Okay, But we're okay. just uh, providing all that we're Oh, right, yeah, you see it, Snowflake yeah. and Whaley. Mm. And the alternative to a dashboard would be to build a data app, one of those Streamlit apps that we're hosting and managing for you. So this is what our Streamlit app looks like. I called it Review Explorer. Maybe there's a cooler name out there. <laughs> so we have a nice slider here so we can slide between the sentiment scores. We have all the 500 reviews here. We can see the distribution of the sentiment scores. So they were pretty positive, to be fair. Like, I think a lot of people actually... This is it. Sweden. Fine. This is Sweden. Because it can't be perfect. <laughs> oh, it has yeah. to be yeah, just a little just, bit. There's I mean, always something to perfect, improve. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> True. Okay, so that's actually interesting. So it'll be somewhat interesting to also see in different countries where does the, the, the curve actually lie. Right. Um, we can also see the uh, keywords that came up. Mm. So something that could be interesting is we can actually come to the top here and we can actually say we want to see all the reviews that have negative sentiments and see how the keyword changes. Vaccine. Um, long queues, long pay, queues. go home is interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> and we can even go all the way to the negative or all the way to the positive to right. see how the different reviews come up. Yeah. But this is still consuming data. We're not really interacting with it too much. So what we can do and what we actually built is we can select any one of these reviews. So let's take this one, for example. And we can now scroll down. And we can now get Gemini to respond to the review for us. Mm. So we'll ask Gemini to respond as if they were the owner of the event space itself. And we can at least check to see if the response is something that is acceptable that we would want to you know, pass along. So OK, it gives quite a long response. Oh, it seems but you should nice. add a context so that it can be really uh snarky when it replies back. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I actually discovered something. So I found this really interesting review where it was completely neutral. And I really want to show it by this guy called Andreas. So this is a very interesting review. He got, he got the vaccination, so he's happy. But Sweden gave a penalty to Slovakia in the European Football Championship. Ah. So it's completely neutral. Yeah. And I was curious, will Gemini be cheeky when it responds or not. So we can actually see if it does. During the exciting European Championship, we're happy everything went smoothly with your vaccination, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the match. Oh, that's pretty that's cheeky. That's so nice. You know? <laughs> uh, and so now we're interacting with data, but we haven't really taken any actions. So what we can do is say, I want to upload this to Kabula, which is going to essentially save this as a table in Snowflake. And now we have a different flow that's within Kabula, where instead of it being based on a frequency, it's based on a triggered event. So this is running. It's going to create an import event to a new table. And I have this flow set up. We can see it's been uploaded. So there's a so new. So this is a set a new flow a, a different because the flow table completely. that this ends up in is yeah. not related to the one that you just yes. showed. You've made a separate completely one. different one. So yeah. this oh, could here. mean that we're pushing it back into Google Maps to auto respond for us or to do whatever we would want it to do. I just decided to bring this into some sort of Google Sheet, and we can see that this is being executed based on the event of a single table, which is this review responses, which is receiving an import event. If we go to the Jobs tab here, we can see that a new job was just triggered, and it's being processed. Uh, so now it's going to be populating into my Google Sheet. But you could imagine this would actually be populating into some sort of the, the Google Maps or the review space right. uh, for the specific use case. Uh -huh. So the whole idea is give business experts access to the data in a governed, monitored way, right. allow them to execute business logic, uh, allow them to execute the business logic themselves based on whatever segmentation that they're doing in the application. Uh -huh. And you can build it so whatever you would want it to do afterwards, yeah. it would be executed by the platform automatically and triggered, which is pretty amazing. So it's just a different way to interact with data and allow people to self-serve somewhat, so to call it. That is awesome. I thought this was a pretty slick demo. Yeah, well, I hope so. And the cherry on top is because we're a managed data platform and we take care of a lot of the infrastructure and everything behind it, it means the speed to delivery for use cases is incredibly quick. Yeah. How long do you think it would take to build this out? Just have a I, guess. I mean, uh, you mean in Kibula? Well, in general, let's say. <laughs> oh, 
I don't know. I, I feel like uh, to do that exact thing, uh, at least at least the whole day. Around an hour yeah. within the platform itself. Yeah. And this is the whole amazing thing that instead of focusing on the top 20 use cases that bring the most value, and you've built the architecture that you need to manage and monitor and operate yeah. yourself, and you literally don't have time to accomplish those very low value use cases, yeah. this now gives you time back to your engineers, back yeah. to your users, to start innovating on data and accomplishing those long tail I mean, use just cases. scraping the web for me, I would have to look up how you do that <laughs> soup stuff in Python. I don't even remember that. Yeah, that would take me an hour, <laughs> just that. <laughs> True. I mean, I did the lazy version. I used one of our partners. But that's, my, that's but the point. I could have used Python. Why would I do that when there's a, you know, a <laughs> component that does it for me? Exactly. And since these are all Dockerized components, you can independently build your own custom component to do whatever you'd want it to do. So oh. if you're missing extractors to pull data into your data warehouse, you can independently go to our developer portal yeah. and build your own custom components. It's just a Dockerized image. Does this image. need uh, Kubernetes underneath? Yeah, it's, it's, running, it's running in Kubernetes, but we're okay. taking care of that for you. You're just building some sort of Docker image in the developer portal. What if you have your own Kubernetes? Can you use that, or do you have to use this separate one that's specifically for this? Uh, so we deploy in multi-tenants as well okay. as single tenants. So okay. we can deploy in a customer's VPC, usually okay. for regulatory requirements, and we can also host and manage a separate VPC as well for them if they want. What's to the easiest tenant. way for people to test Kibula if they want to try it out themselves? The easiest way is we actually have a freemium account, so you can go to the website and try Kibula today. You'll get Kibula in Azure with Snowflake that we're provisioning. Oh, like you a get SaaS. two hours. Yeah, SaaS. Uh, uh, it's completely free. Yeah. Uh, you get two hours of processing for the first month, and then every month you get an hour for free. So you can actually run your own personal use cases in the platform, awesome. which I do. I decided to connect to Strava recently. It's like a running yeah, yeah. application for my friend. I don't run, as you yeah. might yeah. tell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I decided to pull in her data, and I connected to an API, uh, yeah. weather API to pull in weather data, and then yeah. I augment it to see in rain conditions or in this certain temperature you're performing the best and this yeah. is where you perform yeah, yeah. the worst, which is something that you can do and can that's, run completely that's sort of cool. for free, that's which cool. is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but just imagine what you can do this in a company itself. And make money. Well, that's the whole point, right? Get a competitive <laughs> advantage. Yes. Uh, you're precisely. able to accomplish more use cases, so you get a slight edge. <laughs> Great. I'm super happy I got a chance to see this. Thanks for coming back this year. I hope you guys thought this demo was neat and uh, learn that you can get started with Kabula easily. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to be back in just a minute with my closing thoughts, and then we'll hear closing thoughts on the main stage. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for the thanks. demo. No worries.